Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing a part from the thesis of Yves Cadot. Who is Yves Cadot? Well, he is an academic, he's a French judoka, high level, and his thesis was mainly about you know, ground techniques and uh, Jigoro Kano, etc. I'm not going to talk about all of it, of course, or read directly from it. It's in French, but I will talk about the main points, of course, supporting it by footage and uh, some historical facts and interjecting uh, here and there. So the the title may be a bit confusing because one of the important things I've talked about is how judo has a lot of ground techniques since the jujutsu days. Now, let me ask you something. Uh, can you do uh, throwing techniques on the ground? Yes, you can. Uh, now, we may call them turnovers, like this sumigaishi here, but the principles are still being applied. Uh, you can also do a makikomi into a pin, and uh, again, many other uh, things. Can you do other things uh, on the ground besides just controlling? Yeah, you can also throw down, you can ankle pick people. So, like I said, the, def the differentiation in the past wasn't uh, ground and stand up and I'll get to how it became but it was katamewaza controlling and nagewaza throwing techniques not ground and stand up here you see same principles still being applied kuzushi tsukuri kake with this uh, hiza guruma and here this yoko gake that John Danaher is demonstrating so obviously you can do uh, uh, things with the and stand up like arm locks and strangles but uh, when it comes to the ground I think uh, only pins apply that they are only neiwaza or techniques while laying down or on the ground neru means to lay down or sleep so this uh, what it actually means in Japanese but uh, this idea that now we separate grappling techniques or controlling techniques solely to the ground and throwing techniques just for the stand-up is strictly due to sports and rules safety of course being a major role so uh, now let's get to the other parts of uh, the controlling techniques you have the arm locks that you can also do standing up so this has nothing to do with tachi waza and ne waza so the differentiation of course we have to be very mindful of the uh, epoch because Jigoro Kano's aim was to defend, so anything goes standing up and on the ground, and also to rectify society. Sure, competition existed, but was it that important or did it play a huge role like today? Absolutely not. Here you see this self-defense kata from the 1880s. Clearly, it included arm locks uh, standing up and rear naked choke also standing up now how did this come to be why do we say ground techniques and neiwaza and stand up which we only associate with throwing so this idea started back in the late 19th century so if kado talks about this uh, mainly the i would say the noise around this Separation started with, of course, none other than Tanabe. He beat a few Kodokan judokas at the Butoku Kai, and there he actually, you know, ruffled some feathers. And uh, a lot of people were talking about, you know, going to the ground and it's is it the most efficient way to do things? The idea was not to only do uh, grappling or to get away from throws, uh, as we think of today it was to eliminate the threat of the throw that it can have on you as you land to the ground so it wasn't just about picking uh, the ground but also to eliminate the threat of the throw because you can land in various ways that can actually be detrimental to how the fight continues and you can be put in a very sensitive position you can uh, be knocked out of course the quality of the mats play a huge role so 
to eliminate the threat of the throw and you having the most control over the fight a lot of people went for Tomoe Nage a lot of people went for Hikikomi from the belt uh, etc so it was just all this what I'm trying to say is a fancy way of saying I'll just pull guard so this pulling guard again is just to eliminate the threat of the throw again all in competition purposes then later came Oda Tsunetane and he wanted his team to win he wanted to collect all prizes and his cool team to win and so he focused mostly on Katamewaza and to the fastest way to get to Katamewaza was Hekikomi or guard pulling now of course Kano did not like this and uh, what he did was write a lot about this and he was very much against it for the following reasons first one being of course self-defense Kano was mostly interested in self-defense and uh, he says you are a sitting duck when you do this type of things and you are very prone to striking and also against multiple opponents what are you gonna do go on the ground so no at least when you're standing up you can run away so the also the idea or the sorry the concept of throwing and being very uh, incentivized and emphasized was also in the last few decades because back in the day in the jujitsu days a lot of schools focused mainly on striking controlling and of course sword and uh, weapons so the fastest thing to self-defense but really crafting a beautiful throw that can be incredibly detrimental that takes a long time and i think till this day we are still not fully grasping that concept so the idea was to strictly go as quick as possible to Katamewaza. But can you do them separately, like standing up? Of course you can. But when you're standing up, there's the threat of the throw. So that's why you go down. Now, there is throwing on the ground, as I've just shown you, but little to no impact. Hence why we call them today reversals. But again, the same principles still uh, apply and then by 1915 everyone was saying Newaza, Tachiwaza and then three years later around June of 1918 Kano also started using that term and now here we are uh, today still war our vision is warped by competition so now I want to talk about this sitting down and butt scooting there's a reason why there is a lot of mocking and disrespect to it because if you think about it when it comes to the concept of control katamewaza that's what it means there is zero control and also you're giving your opponent a lot of control you're 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 basically saying this i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna expect him to decide to come to me and then do uh you know grappling with me now you can get to uh, control like this as you just saw here uh, from the snaps you uh, snap one with a tai otoshi and then you get to the strangle you can do standing guillotine you can do standing arm locks but you have to be willing to uh, face the threat of the throw and uh, so if we were to look from the katamewaza and newaza I'm sorry, Katamewaza and Nagewaza perspective, we get to see that sitting down like this has literally no value, no skill, nothing, and you're giving the other guy a lot of control. MMA or uh, combat jujitsu, they would just slap you into oblivion, and hence why we eliminated kicks when someone is on the ground in uh, MMA because of this safety hazard. I understand that there is no striking in judo, so you can just technically sit down uh, in BJJ, I mean, and do this, but uh, you have to understand that such habits should not be encouraged. The whole goal is to show that you are better, you are more crafty, you are more skilled, you're more stronger, sure, but this whole goal is about skill and you are being better but sitting down and because they're constrained by these rules a lot of the guys would engage but some get very crafty they would jump on top of you and put you in a very embarrassing position do people get a submission from this scooting thing yes but in terms of katamewaza itself is it valid absolutely not so 
just like the bent over posture uh, that uh, unfortunately got away with leg grabs uh, it should be done away with because it does not align with judo's values and judo's uh, ideas for self-defense so should butt scooting and again it's all about skill it's all about control it's all about you know grappling iq so if you enjoyed this presentation please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening